Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and today I want to talk a little bit about consistency. Consistency is a, an idea, a topic that is really interesting to me and that I do try to touch on often. I haven't done many videos on it, so it is something that you might hear more from me about. But typically, when we talk about consistency, I talk about it in terms of our activities. So to me, what consistency means is taking an action that you can do reliably, repeatably for a really long time. And when we are trying to achieve a new goal or, or learn something new or reach a new, uh, reach a new anything, taking consistent steps toward that is what is going to be so powerful. So sometimes we think that, oh, I'm going to jump all in and do this one big thing, this one big action to get me where I want to be. But the reality is, is that those big actions tend to be really unsustainable. And so focusing on the much smaller, consistent steps over the long term are incredibly powerful. And so I talk about consistency in choosing the healthy foods and consistency in your movement or your exercise and in your mindfulness activities and in your sleep routine. But one of the places that I never really think about consistency that is really so important is consistency in not doing anything. And I have to give credit to a friend of mine, uh, Brittany, AKA Healing Ginger. She's amazing. She's a, a nutritionist. You can find her on Instagram. Um, but she brought this topic up in her social media at one point. And I thought, oh, that is so interesting. And I need to dive into this a little bit more. Because while I talk about being consistent with all of these actions, I think it's important to recognize that we also need to be consistent with not doing stuff and not achieving. Because we live in a world right now that is just so go, 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 produce, 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 do, 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 that we do not schedule enough downtime, we do not schedule enough quiet time or rest time. And being consistent with that is actually going to have massive impacts on the long term in terms of your stress, your stress response and your general health, your mental health, your physical health, all of those things. So let's talk a little bit today about consistency of rest. So I do want to talk quickly about consistency of sleep because that is rest. Sleep is very, very, very important for rest. So when I talk about consistency and being consistent around sleep, I mean, going to bed at the same time every night, getting up at the same time every morning, having a similar sleep routine every day, um, exposing yourself to light in the morning consistently, you know, being, uh, uh, having sunlight or, or light in your face in the morning, consistently turning the lights down at the end of the day. So those are all things that are kind of habits, if you will, um, consistent habits that you can keep up for the long term that will really help to solidify and improve your sleep, your routine and your quality of sleep in general. So that is, consistency is very important. Keeping your sleep a priority and keeping the actions, you know, small and subtle, but the same repeatedly day after day after day, that is going to be beneficial to sleep. But what about rest? What about these quiet times? What about this downtime during the day? Because if you're lucky and you're sleeping for six, or for eight hours a night, rather, um, that means you have 16 hours in the day. And what do we do in those 16 hours? We're all expected to just produce, create, achieve, go constantly. And that is not sustainable. So you do need to put aside those eight hours for consistent sleep every night. But let's also talk about what's going to happen from a rest perspective within those other 16 hours that you're awake during the day. So what is rest? Let's start there. Rest is really, it's downtime. It's time when you're not doing, moving, producing. Well, I shouldn't say moving. You can be moving. I'll talk about that. But you're not doing, producing, achieving. Rest might actually look a little bit like boredom. Your mind is not being stimulated and it's having a quiet time, if you will. And very few of us are comfortable anymore with being bored. Most of us, as soon as we have a moment to ourselves or a moment of quiet time, we're reaching for a phone or we're reaching for social media or reaching for something to stimulate us and make us excited and excite us essentially. Because our brains are wired such that the more that we do, this isn't always just on our brains, it's part of society as well, but the more you do, the more productive you feel, the more you feel you have a place in the world, a place in society. And rest is really not rewarded. Productivity is rewarded, creativity is rewarded, but rest is not rewarded. But the important thing to know is that rest, boredom, 
uh, downtime are all crucial for both productivity and creativity. If you've ever tried to work a full 16 hours in a day, you'll know that it's not possible. Even just sitting down, if you're doing physical labor or cleaning or anything like that, even just sitting down for 10 to 15 minutes gives you maybe that boost that you need to get back up and keep on going. So putting those rest moments into the day are really crucial to help you actually work smarter, not harder, but smarter. If you're someone who is in a job or in a role where you do a lot of mental work, and that's a lot of people. So not to say that physical labor is not involved with mental stuff, that's not what I mean. But if you're in a job that doesn't demand much of you physically, but does demand a lot of you mentally, taking brain breaks, taking a rest from that work is actually going to help you uh, be a more productive worker and be a more creative worker. So try being bored. I, that's a challenge for you. Just sit with yourself, sit with your thoughts and just sit there. Don't reach for your phone, don't reach for TV, don't reach for something to do. Just let yourself be bored. Adding rest to your day is also probably going to improve your sleep. I say probably because it's not always the case, but when we learn to be able to shut our minds down, our bodies down, we can do it, a, it's, a, it's practice, right? So the more we do it, the better we can do it in other areas. So by learning to turn off your brain, learning to turn off even your body in the middle of the day, you're going to be much better at being able to shut it off at the end of the day where that quality sleep is important. So what does rest look like? Well, this is the fun part. It can look like almost anything you can imagine. It just depends on what it's, what feels right for you. So I've already mentioned before, sleeps, sleep, especially at nighttime, sleep can be, uh, sleep is, not can be, sleep is a very important form of rest and always will be a top priority for me. So don't ever forget about sleep, but we're going to dive into some other ones as well. Napping. So napping can be a form of rest. Um, I don't love to recommend napping all the time. If you've had a really bad sleep um, and you really need to catch up on sleep, then napping can help. The thing about napping is that it can interfere with sleep later on in the day. Sometimes if you're napping, keep it relatively short and not too long because that will definitely change your, your circadian rhythm. So naps when done right, like 20, 30 minute power naps can be really helpful and effective. Um, but just making sure that, you know, a two to three hour nap is very likely going to change your circadian rhythm, making it harder for you to sleep at night. So if a nap is a really helpful, powerful rest for you, keep it short. Short naps can be very effective for rest and can really help you get back to the afternoon or later in the day with a, a new level of energy and creativity. So use naps, just use them wisely. Walking. This doesn't sound like restful, but walking can be incredibly restful, especially if you're someone that's using their brain all the time to get out of your brain and get into your body. Walking is an excellent tool for that. Now you can do anything on the exercise spectrum actually for rest, especially when it comes to like the mental rest. Physical rest is different. So if you're looking for physical rest, no, you're not going to be wanting to do a crazy um, intense 60 minute hit workout. But even walking for physical rest, you know, gentle, quiet walking or yoga or anything like that. But walking, especially when you're looking for a mental break, walking is a really, really powerful tool. So a 10 to 20 minute walk, especially outside in the middle of the day, can really help to reset your brain, get you a little bit bored maybe, and get that creative, get those creative juices flowing again. Meditation. Meditation is an obvious one. Um, that is absolutely a state of rest. So in, again, in the middle of the day, set some time aside to do five, 10, 15, 30 minute meditation. Whatever you have time to do is going to be helpful. That meditation might look like a five minute, um, a five minute playlist on an app. It might look like a 10 minute breathing exercise. It might look like, um, a, I don't know, a meditation, a guided meditation from YouTube. It's entirely up to you. And I want you to play around with different options and find what fits what fits into your schedule and what makes you feel rested and helps you come out feeling like you've had a break, feeling like you've had some rest and feeling like you're ready to go again. Yoga Nidra is actually a specific type of meditation and it can be just as effective as a nap. Yoga Nidra is one of the best recommendations for sort of midday, what they call non-sleep rest, essentially. Um, there are tons of Yoga Nidra scripts on YouTube. So again, Something you'll have to play around with to find one that 
jives with you, but check out a few different options on YouTube um, and pencil into your into your planner to say like this is this time is blocked off because it's going to make the rest of your day more productive. So give the yoga need to try and let me know if you have a favorite yoga need or script that you would share. I'd love to have some recommendations to try for myself too. Having a hobby. This is another really great one. So if you are someone again, who is usually spends their time doing one thing, having a little outlet to do something different. So maybe you're someone, uh, let's say you do a lot of work with numbers or something for whatever job that you're doing. Maybe you have a completely creative outlet where you do a hobby. Maybe you make crafts or maybe you sew or maybe you do something completely separate. That actually is restful because you're not using your mind for your primary task, which gets bogged down and tired and bored sort of of the repetition sometimes. So thinking about something entirely different, entirely new, or maybe you're a creative person and you like to be creative. So maybe you need to do some bookkeeping or numbers or something that is going to kind of take you into the other, to another world, doing just something different, a hobby, a side gig, something that is just usually fun and relaxing. Don't go do math if you don't like math, but something that you find fun and relaxing, that's very different from what you're used to doing that can be a really helpful form of rest. And then time away. Maybe you need some time away from your job, from your family. Um, maybe that's, you maybe have the luxury of, you know, taking a six month sabbatical. Maybe it's a night away in a hotel without any kids yelling at you. Whatever it looks like for you, maybe trying to structure some sort of time away that will just give you a little bit of change from the norm, uh, a little bit of change from the do, 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 go, go, go all the time. Um, maybe it's a different um, city, maybe you get a different view, whatever that looks like, uh, that time away can be really helpful to rest, reset and recharge your brain to get you going again. So how much rest do you need? Well, at night, I'm still arguing the seven to eight hours of sleep. So that's separate, but during the day, and I'm going to say midday, like a 20 to 30 minute session of something. So if it's a nap, if it's a yoga nidra, if it's a walk, if it's a meditation, if it's you switch to a hobby for 20 to 30 minutes, that rest in the middle of the day, I guarantee you is going to make your mental health better, your productivity, your creativity, all of those things better. So being consistent with your rest is going to help you in so many ways. And I need to remember this too for myself, because as much as I talk about, like I mentioned, consistency around all of those activities and actions and things that we need to do, being consistent with the things that we shouldn't be doing or the downtime, I guess I should say, is also incredibly important. Let me know what your favorite way to kind of rest in the middle of the day is to recharge what makes you feel uh, energized and alive again. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.